Hello and welcome to this week's newsletter. Hope you all had a great Queen's Jubilee bank holiday. It was certainly lots of fun and games up here, somewhat ruined by the weather on the Saturday and Sunday, but Thursday and Friday were great fun. And I had a good game of golf on Thursday as well, so that was good fun. Um, lots to get through this week because of the bank's holiday. I didn't get a newsletter out to you last week, so I've got two weeks worth of news to catch up on. So we'll crack straight on with Goulston Golf Club news, and we'll go all the way back to the, where are we? Let's go all the way back to Wednesday, the 25th of May, and the ladies Australian Spoons qualifier, which is a foursomes competition won by Kinza Ellis and Tonya Connor with 34 points, beating Vera Walnoff and Heather Harvey on countback. So well done to you two ladies for winning that. Then we'll go to the midweek Stapleford played on the 26th of May, where Bill Ball won Division One with 40 points. Well done, Bill. Division two was won by Brian Rivet, also with 40 points. Well done, Brian. And in division three, Andy Kirk won with 41 points. Well done, Andy. Good golf, those in 40 points. And then on the Sunday, the 29th of May, we had a mixed roll-up Stableford where Kev Shaw won with 41 points. Well done, Kev. Great golf that. What on earth happened to you in Ireland? Who only knows? It's golf, isn't it? But well done, Kev. Great return to form. That he beat John Mills in the second on 38 and Richard Old into third on 37. Then we'll go to, where are we now? The Lady Centenary Texas Scramble played on Wednesday, the 1st of June. That was a good fun event. Two men and one lady in a three ball Texas Scramble where there was a whole host of scores tied on net 58. So five teams tied on net 58. That's very, very strange for a Texas Scramble but very, very close, obviously, where Jules Harbord, Dave Butcher, and Jack Butcher, looks like they've come on top, according to my list, they've come on top on countback with a net 58. They beat four other teams, so well done to you three. Good golf, that. And then we'll go to the first Jubilee event of Bank Holiday Weekend on the Thursday, which was the Am Am, um, and that was won by Martin Bullen, Gail Chapman, Bob Cooper, and Ladies President Jackie Walsh. Well done to you for I think you had a 96, was it? Yeah, 96 points on an Am Am. Best, two best scores out of four on every hole. Stapleford's well done, that was great fun, that. And then we all hang around for the beacon lighting and a very bizarre, very bizarre entertainment it was. Um, yeah, I'm sure you've heard all about that where we had this entertainer. He was playing the trumpet, he was doing a bit of jazz. He was a very odd man, but entertaining maybe in the wrong way, but it was entertaining nonetheless. Good fun, that was. And then the Friday, we had uh, just a Jubilee Stapleford. Uh, which was just a normal, pretty much roll-up Stableford, uh, where Rob Allen won. He won with 40 points, beating Laura Westfall into second with 39 points, and Nick Studd into third on 38 points. Then Sunday, oh, Sunday, that was nasty first thing. My God, I was here at half past seven, and that was absolutely torrential. But it did stop about nine o'clock time, so a few very hardy souls went out there and played in the uh, Jew Mixed Medal and Draw Drug Horn Cup Knockout Qualifier, where Matt King won Division One with a net 69. Well done, Matt. Great golf, that. Uh, Kieran Gallant won Division Two with a net 70. And in Division Three, Pete Philbin won with a net 73. Well done to you, gents. On to shop news, and we've taken uh, another delivery of Under Armour clothing, so it's coming through in little stages. Uh, we've got now this year's latest shirts and what have you, very smart looking they are. So please come in and take a look at those. We're also doing our promotion where we're doing a free fitting and a free follow-up lesson promotion as well. So if you're in the market for some new golf clubs, anything to the value of 300 pounds or over, come and see me, we can book you in for a fitting. Uh, and then you can, we can also have a follow-up lesson after that, all free of charge. So that's a great promotion to take off, to take up on if you're in the market for some new clubs, driver, fairway woods, wedges, you name it, putters, we can fit for anything. We've got all the tools to be able to do that. And remember, we also take trade in for your old clubs as well. We'll give you a fair price for those as well. Tour news, well, it's all about the Live Tour, isn't it? This Saudi Arabian backed money tournaments um, that has called a lot of gossip in golf. Um, yeah, basically the Saudis are coming, invested a load of money into this Live 
tour, as they do invest a lot of things, you know, everyday life, they invest things that we're into as well, unfortunately. But they do invest and they've invested in the golf. So it's caused, it's caused a bit of a breakaway league. So we now know that the likes of Dustin Johnson, Sergio Ghost Garcia, Phil Mickelson, Ian Poulter, Lee Breswood, Richard Brand, Graham McDowell, to name but a few, are gone over and now going to play these live tour events with massive purses. I think Dustin Johnson got a hundred million dollar sign-on fee just for saying he was going to play in the event. So that was amazing, and they're going to win four million pound for four million dollars first prize, which is head and shoulders the biggest purse in golf. So they really are playing for mega, mega money. And I don't blame some of those guys at the end of their career for taking one final, final payday to pay for the rest of their, you know, retirement, because it is phenomenal money they're gonna get. So yeah, but, you know, in golf, we've singled them out, they're chasing the money, that's rude, it's greedy, blah, 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 but who can blame it? Who doesn't want to improve their life and their family? But yeah, whether you agree with the Saudi money or not, that's a whole different ball game, isn't it? And I think we, that's not for me a comment, to be honest, but I think we would all be very hypocritical if we did think that the Saudi money, or didn't think that the Saudi money was into an awful lot of things that we do these days. In fact, our own government has certainly taken lots of payments for various things from the Saudi government as well. So yeah, we should be so hypocritical, despite the human rights record, which we obviously all know is not fantastic. But yes, so that's been the big gossip. They're all off to play those. Now, the only concern I have really with it all would be if the PGA and the major championships didn't allow those players to play in their tournaments. I could see that being very sad. Imagine that quite a lot more players go over and play this live tour and that then stops them playing in the major championships. So you get the Open champion for the year but they're not actually the best golfer because half the field was playing live tour events. So that would be my only concern. You want to see in those major championships, especially the best players, every single top player in the world, you want to see in the biggest championships in the world. So hopefully it doesn't come to that and they see sense and they work right around it. But yeah, certainly has caused a lot of uh, rumblings through the golfing world in the last uh, couple of weeks or probably last few months or so, hasn't it? But it's now just confirmed starts over at Centurion it's, and in St Albans on Thursday. Um, in the women's game, we had a, we've got a new US Open champion, Minji Lee, was absolutely superb start to finish. She won the Evian Championship last summer, the Ladies Major Championship as well, and she's now won her second major at the Ladies US Open. She won comfortably, she was straight ahead of the field. I think she won by four or five shots in the end. So that was fantastic to see Minji Lee, young Australian girl, really sort of playing well now, especially in the major championship. So yeah, that was awesome to look, awesome to watch. Um, in the men's game, Billy Horshaw, one over in, uh, he won over at Muirfield Village, Jack Nicholas's place, his home design golf course. He won comfortably as well, won by about five shots from Aaron Wise, I think it was. Billy Horshaw in great form there. Again, what a good golf swing he's got. Uh, very repeatable golf swing. He just can stay calm and he's superb, is Billy Horshaw. So well done to him. And the DP World Tour, it was played in Germany, the, the, the Porsche European Open. I can't remember which course it was, but it was mad. It was a mad golf course, water all over the place. Two big par fives to finish. It was great fun to be honest. And a Finnish lad called Shmali, he won in the end anyway. He chipped, he shot some final round 64, which was the best round by anybody, by about three shots on the last day. Shmali, I can't remember, I can't remember how you pronounce his name, but anyway, he won, he was superb. He won with a 64 final round and nobody else could catch him really. It was superb golf, but what a nuts golf course. I say water everywhere, it was all risk and reward and very entertaining. I can see that being a Ryder Cup course in the future if it's not already been named because it was very much kind of like that. Be, be fantastic for match play, all the risk and reward shots that come. Right, continuing with Tour Pro News. Men's US Open starts next Thursday, so you've got seven days to get your squares for our sweeps. Like I would say, we're almost half sold now, so we've got about another 70 squares to go, so make sure you come and get those. Don't leave it to the last minute like you all do, and be disappointed, yeah? Okay, we've got 70 squares back, so if you're up here tomorrow, if you're up here at the weekend, please come and get your US Open squares. Two pound gives you a square, okay? Gives you a, a player, you can draw a player, and then if the, your player does well, you'll get some money onto your Pro Shop account. First prize is £100 onto your Pro Shop account. Or if they have a low round of the day, your player gets the lowest round of the day, you get £20 onto your account. So if your player cleans up, if he wins by a mile and has 
the lowest round on all four days, which never happens, but Henry Stenson came very close a few years ago. You can win up to £180 on your Pro Shop account, all for the sake of £2 little gamble. So come and get your square for that. Right, okay, that's enough of me waffling on, to be honest. Um, we've gone through a lot there. We better cut it short, so no time for the tip of the week this week, unfortunately, but I'll come back with some more tips next week. Thanks very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you over the next few days where the weather forecast looks fantastic. Oh, forgot to mention Captain Pro News, didn't I? Looking forward to my game this week against uh, who we've got. I'll guess Colin, Denny, and Charles Brook. Very much forward, looking forward to that. Um, did I fill you in in the news that we lost our previous game i can't the captain pro because i can't remember if i mentioned it last week and if i didn't he'd be very upset but well done to dave punter and kelvin gillies they beat us by two points in the state better ball stableford i think we got 36 and they got 38 to be honest i kind of threw it away a little bit we were battling hard we were always behind me and captain keith but on the 15th hole we managed to get one point ahead with three to play and then i just pulled this two iron into the rough made a blob down there Got stuck in a bunker on 17, blob down there, and then hit it way left into the bushes, down 18. Blob, 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 finish. Keith, unfortunately, couldn't carry me, couldn't carry me on hit by himself. So that let Kelvin and Dave in and win by two points. So well done to you two gents. You probably did deserve it, to be honest, anyway. You did play the better golf out of the four of us. Uh, Keith had a nice little run through the turn. I was quite steady, but then a miserable finish for me. Kind of gifted you the game. But well done to you two. You will take a two-point lead. Kelvin and Dave onto the last day, the final day at the end of October. Right, that is everything for this week. Nearly forgot Dave, but I thought I'd better mention it. Okay, take care, everybody. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.